Are you a woman over 50 agonising over what jeans she should be wearing? Well, in this video, I'm going to talk you through the five pairs of jeans I think every woman should have and what are mom jeans anyway? Welcome to Beauty by Des. I'm Des, I'm over 60 and I love to talk about makeup, skincare, clothes and other bits and bobs that make me happy. I also have a website called Beauty by Des and I'm on Insta and Facebook too. And if you like this kind of content, please give me a thumbs up because it lets me know that I'm on the right track. And better yet, subscribe to the channel so that YouTube knows to put my video in front of other older women who might enjoy them. And with that, let's begin. So let me take you through the five pairs of jeans that have served me so well over the last few years and that I think every woman over 50 can wear. Now, jeans, as you, I'm sure, are aware, are a bit of a minefield when it comes to choosing size, fit, rise, length, etc. It is a bit of a minefield. I do think elastane has played a, a really good part in the comfort of jeans over the last, say, 20, 30 years. It gives it that fantastic stretchability. And I find that a real comfort because you want to be comfortable in your jeans. I mean, who doesn't remember, if you're my age, lying on the bed and trying to do up your zip? Oh, my Lord, in the days, that must have been in the 70s, I think, when there wasn't any elastane. But the use of spandex or elastane has been so invaluable in the making of jeans and the manufacturing of jeans, I would say, because it gives it that stretch and that comfort that we all are looking for. So without further ado, let me start with my first pair. Now, these are what I call my slobbing jeans. They're from Uniqlo and they are probably my oldest pair, actually. Now, something I'm going to touch on is the rise of jeans. But oh my gosh, it is such a minefield. I have measured all the jeans and what I'm going to do is in the info box, you will see I have listed exactly what pair of jeans they are, what the rise is, what the length is, and also what the circumference is, because that's been a really interesting part of the planning of this video, is the circumference. In other words, how long is this bit here? Because it completely differs from the size. Now, believe it or not, these jeans, and as I say, these must be about 10 years old now, eight years old, these jeans circumference bears absolutely no relation to the size. Now, believe it or not, <laughs> These are size 26, but I'll tell you what the circumference is. Let me just check. The circumference of these jeans is 31 and a half inches. Now, how do you go from a size 26, which is what was listed on the label, to 31 and a half? I mean, it just bears absolutely no relation at all, does it? It's madness. So that is why it is so important to try your jeans on if you possibly can, or at least nowadays, thank goodness, you can send things back. But, you know, it's a bit of a pain and you would like to be as sure as you can before you buy them that they're going to be the right size. Well, it's a bit tricky, but if you can probably get to know a brand, and I know they do change and Uniqlo do have, have changed their measuring system, I think. So now I'm sure this pair would not be classed as 26 inches because it would just be a nonsense. Anyway, let me tell you a bit more about these jeans and why they are my slobbing jeans. Well, partly because they're so old and they've obviously had a lot of wear, but they're very, very stretchy. As you can see in the insert, I've styled them with a beige hoodie and some tan boots. And that would be an outfit that I might wear to go to the corner shop or to be working at home. So that's my first pair of jeans that I think every woman over 50 should have, a good pair of slobbing jeans. The second pair of jeans that I think every woman over 50 should have in her wardrobe is a pair of skinny jeans. Now I talked about these in a recent video which I'll link up there in the corner for you and down below in the description box. And that was about five items in a wardrobe that I think every woman over 50 should have. So I've included them in this, obviously. I won't go into them too much longer, but you'll see in the insert, I've styled them a bit differently from the video. Those of you who watched that other video, um, I styled them differently in this video because I didn't want to show exactly the same thing. So here I'm wearing a lilac jumper and different boots. But I honestly think they are a fantastic addition to my wardrobe and they are the more of the dressing up type of jeans that I wear but very interestingly now here's the rub about the rise so these actually have exactly the same circumference 31 and a half inches to the Uniqlo pair that I just showed you 
but the main difference is that the rise here is much higher, in fact a whole inch higher than the rise of the Uniqlo genes. So that makes them less loose and, and tighter, in other words, than the slobbing pair, the Uniqlo pair. So the rise is really important. Now at the moment the fashion is for high rise jeans and I really don't like them at all because they're not flattering to me, they cut me here, I'm very short waisted and then I have a bit of a tum so I carry my fat around here, nothing here, it's all out front. So high rise just accentuates my the roundness of my stomach, it really doesn't help. I much prefer jeans that are lower down or have a bit more give down there and actually I'm going to show another pair a bit later which are mid rise, they're specifically labelled as mid-rise. Now these are what they call girlfriend jeans, whatever that is. I assume it means they're not completely baggy like the so-called boyfriend jeans, but they're not totally skinny either. They have a little bit more give. Anyway, they I think they're really comfortable, but they are that bit tighter, so I wouldn't wear them to go to the shops. I would wear them to go out of an evening and you can dress them up and dress them down. And here I've dressed them down a bit. In my other video, I dressed them up with a silk shirt, but they're really comfortable. And I think skinny jeans, I know that's a bit of a misnomer really, they're not skinny. They're just slim fitting jeans. And I do think they suit everybody. Interestingly, these gap jeans have exactly the same amount of elastane, polyester and cotton as the Uniqlo jeans, but they just don't feel quite as forgiving and I do think that's because of the rise. So the third pair of jeans that I think every woman over 50 should have in her wardrobe is a pair of straight leg jeans. Now this is a bit of a shocker for me because I'm not a straight leg jeans kind of gal, but the reason I decided to buy these was because I was really looking for some mid-rise jeans and could I find any, could I? So I asked a girlfriend of mine and she said, oh, why don't you try Pepe jeans? Now that was a name that rang a bell because I'm sure they were around in the 70s. So I looked on their website and I have to say they've got a fantastic choice of jeans. They really have. And I'll put all the details down below in the description box, but they actually do talk about rise. A lot of jeans brands don't talk specifically about rise or they don't give you the size of the rise, as it were. And they might say that something's mid rise when to me it might be high rise. So it's a bit of a moot point what rise actually means because there is no specific definition. However, these are definitely mid rise. So these are 81% cotton, 17% polyester and 2% elastane. So same amount of elastane but much less cotton and more polyester. Now I think this is because they're trying to cut down on the production of cotton because it uses so much water. So I think on their website they call this washing well or something. Anyway again as I say all the info will be down in the info box below. But I have to say they are very comfortable and they are definitely mid-rise. The circumference of these jeans is 35 inches so much larger or wider than the other two pairs of jeans and that's because they're meant to sit on the hip and actually they're very very stretchy that may be something to do with the polyester combined with the cotton and the um, and the elastane because it's the same amount of elastane they're amazingly comfortable and the rise is eight and a half inches like the Uniqlo but lower than the gap, the skinny jean gap, which is nine inches. So they definitely do sit on the hips where they're meant to, which is what I really like. It's interesting, the straight leg, when I look down and I look at my shoes or my boots that I'm wearing with the jeans, it still feels slightly odd to me because I'm so used to wearing the skinny shape. I think it's because my legs are quite slim, my thighs are quite slim, and as I say, my weight is all here and my tum. So I've been used to kind of accentuating the fact that I've got slim legs by wearing skinny jeans or cigarette pants as you know I used to wear back in the day. But I have to say I'm, I'm warming to them. I'm still not quite convinced that they are the best jeans for me but they will suit lots of other women without doubt and they are very very comfortable. So I would definitely say check out this type of jean and go onto the Pepe website, see what you think. There may be other companies, other brands that are doing them, but I haven't found a better brand for identifying and being accurate about, I would say, what a rise actually is. So the fourth pair of jeans that I think every woman over 50 should have in her wardrobe is a pair of black jeans. Now, I think black denim is quite a tricky one because if you're buying a regular sort of black denim type jean from a jeans brand 
you'll find that the material is really quite different. I've done this and I've ordered what I think is the right size, the size that I would be in a blue denim, but it's completely not. It's often much less forgiving, the fabric, and maybe not actually denim. However, these jeans are, so they're not the classic black jean. These are from Gap as well. And again, these are a good few years old now. And these, I think, are what they call a boyfriend shape. And you can see they're quite wide here. And they've got turnips at the bottom. And they are faded black. So to be honest, if I could choose, I would have chosen a plain black. But the material is just not the same. Now, these are definitely mid-rise. They are 34 and a half circumference so you get the nice big comfy waist and they do sit on my hips which is great and I think although they're not the plain black there's something kind of slightly edgy about them they're they're not distressed completely and I, I just can't get into wearing the distressed you know holes I just don't I don't feel right in them it's just not for me but I mean these take me some way to that you can dress them up as I have in the insert with a black silk shirt and of course you can dress them down as well but they are incredibly comfortable now the rise on these is 10 inches which is really high and bizarre, isn't it? Because you've got a 10 inch rise here and yet they've got the 34 circumference. So that does take you down to the hip, which I suppose <laughs> if you had it on your hip, really on your hip, and I probably, because I'm short waisted, my, my um, proportions are slightly skewed. But if they really were on your hip, you'd probably find that they're hanging down a little bit at the crutch. Anyway, I find these very, very comfortable. Unfortunately, there's no composition label, so I can't tell you how much spandex or cotton or anything they've got. Compared to the Pepe's that I just showed you, they're not stretchy at all, but they're very comfortable because they've got a nice big circumference. So for me, it's, as you can see, there's a theme going on. It's all about the circumference and the rise together. So the fifth pair of jeans that I think every woman over 50 should have in her wardrobe is a pair of white jeans. Now these are my Gap Best Girlfriend jeans, so they're similar to the skinny jeans that I showed before. But these are 97% cotton and 3% elastane, no polyester, and they are, they are stretchier, there's no doubt about it. They are stretchier than the skinny ones. And the circumference is 33 and a half, which is two inches wider or bigger than the skinny jeans, which are also from Gap. So it just shows you circumferences are really the key to comfort, really. Well, a mixture of circumference and rise, I'd say. I think white jeans look good with anything. They'll look great in your Breton top that you're probably going to wear in the spring, summer. They look great in the winter with a woolly pulley, as I've styled them here, with a cardigan with boots, with sandals, they go with anything really. Um, but they are something that you'd want to wear for an occasion, I would say going out rather than staying in. So what's the verdict? Well, the verdict is to look for jeans that have the rise that is comfortable for you. Obviously, if you like high rise, if you're not short-waisted like me, check out the rise and the circumference and also check out the stretch of the material because that definitely plays a part in comfort and get to know brands so when you order from a brand maybe order two sizes measure the circumference see which one is the right one for you so that you know that that circumference is going to be comfortable for you and then you hopefully you can take that to another brand once you get to know how generous or how ungenerous their sizings are then you'll get to understand what jeans feel most comfortable on your particular body so there you have it those are the five pairs of jeans that i think every woman over 50 should have in her closet when i say should i don't mean you've got to have them even one of those pairs would serve you very well whether it was the slobbing pair or the white pair or the mid-rise pair what I really want to do in this video is to help you to choose the right pair of jeans because as we know, and as I've just shown, the sizing is so inconsistent. All the brands I've shown here are not high-end. Probably the most expensive of all of them is the Pepe jeans, but they're not super expensive. I think probably the most expensive pair of jeans on their website is about £80, which is probably about $100. But all the others are very reasonably priced. Thank you so much for watching. If you found this video helpful, informative or even amusing, then please consider giving me a thumbs up, subscribing to the channel and hitting the bell icon. I'm so grateful you're here and I hope you'll join me on my next video. See you then. Bye.